Hello, 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 it's me, and uh, we're going to start playing a bit more Hollow Knight. These, this is my ongoing experiment to try and do chill streams, where instead of my old style of uh, streaming, where I c chatter constantly, and um, literally do not shut the fuck up for even a single second because I hate dead air, well, ever since my COVID hospitalization, trying to do that literally makes me so sick I have to go be in bed for a few days. So instead of that, uh, I'm going to try and, I'm trying to do this chill streaming thing where I play and I talk, but I don't talk as much. So, uh, without further ado, we may as well continue where we left off. So, last time... We picked up a few basic items and we explored the first opening area, which is the Forgotten Crossroads. An empty, dripper, dripping and echoing zone on the outskirts of the ancient lost city of Hallownest. Well, that could have gone better. So, the next place we can go... There's only really one place we can make progress right now, and that's... Uh, this way. On the far side of the Forgotten Crossroads is uh, a guy, and we're going to go kill that guy, and that will grant us access to the next zone. Because that's kind of how Metroidvania games work, and this is very much one of those. Nothing more tragic than your hard-earned corpse money dropping neatly into a hole full of spikes. On the other hand, occasionally spikes are on your side. Spikes. They can operate for good or for ill. Spikes. They play by their own rules. Aha. So this opening area of, Halona, of uh, the Forgotten Crossroads, all of these different branches poking off different ends of the map uh, basically will require different skills to get through. Oh, I'm surprised you've missed out on this, because it seems like the kind of game you might get a real kick out of. It's it's very Dark Souls, but... Uh, I mean, Dark Souls is kind of a Metroidvania physical logic as applied to a 3D world. But this is... Uh, like, there's a lot of things that are compared to Dark Souls somewhat spuriously, but I feel like this is genuinely the Dark Souls of its medium, because... <laughs> it interplays with all of the th same themes and does so in very good ways uh, with a great deal of skill and interest and it's just this fascinating intriguing empty corpse of a world these different kingdoms of bug people in this dusty fossilized museum of a kingdom Have you not played the Souls games? You should go play the Souls games. I think Elden Ring is the weakest of. Um... I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna blast this guy until he dies, or not, as the case may be. Sometimes you run out of magic, and you have to. You have to kill stuff to get your magic. I suppose that's a fair point. There are a couple of people who don't play many games, but instead watch me play them. So I'm not exactly going to be one to complain. 
Anyway, I think the next ability we unlock is the air dash, which will unlock a whole nother branch uh, of the place. Every single inch of this world absolutely drips with atmosphere and beauty. Oh, hey, okay. Those things explode. Good to know. I feel like I'm half asleep. Maybe streaming today was a bad idea. <laughs> I love that we go from the extremely empty, dusty, echoing sadness of the crossroads and end up next in this incredibly lush and verdant, but equally, equally ruined zone. lose a hit point when you fall in the water, I think. Or if you fall in any kind of a environmental trap. Any, Anyway, like any kind of dungeon adventure-y game, we are going to delve deep, acquire currency, and spend it on tools that will allow us to delve deeper. Unless we die. I didn't die at all in the entire previous stream, despite bosses and things. Is anyone who's ever done a lot of walking in abandoned Victorian gardens in odd little corners of London? Uh, we'll know that sitting on an iron bench under a, an abandoned street lamp is definitely a good way to recover your stamina. Interesting. Who could this be? I say, as if I don't know. For clarity, I have played the first six hours of this game several times. <laughs> I've always got the intention of coming back and... Oh, I've always got the intention of just playing it all the way through. When I tried to play it through by myself, my immediate response has always been, Oh, this is too pretty. I have to, I have to play this where other people can see it. But it's too long for a Let's Play series on YouTube. And unfortunately, various different things have gotten in the way every time I've tried to stream. I think I've tried twice to stream through this game. There's a few different ideas about what's going on in the story that We'll probably come up a few times as we go. One thing I do find myself wondering is... The protagonist of this game is in some way compelled. We don't know what it is that's drawn him to this place. We don't even know if he is a he. I mean, he's an adorable little bug person, so... Really, who knows? But he's definitely a he in the sense that he's a little guy, I think. But the fact that the entities in this place who have uh, lost their minds, the many dwellers of this of this kingdom who ostensibly 
are um, dead husks animated by some other force. Uh, combined with the the fact of, of this guy's compulsion, the fact that the only explanation we have for him coming here at all is this kind of, like, nameless drawing. It makes me think of cordyceps and other other parasites that alter the brains of their hosts, causing various kinds of mysterious compulsive behaviour. And I think it's a really interesting idea to tie, or potentially be tying, such a fascinating physical thing, as in, such a fascinating thing of the real world, to this, to this fantasy world, within the kind of like thematic idea of insect people. Isn't this a contrast from the crossroads? Such a humid, lively place. The roads twist and turn in the most wonderful ways. I've done my best to chart the area ahead, although I must admit some of the area's inhabitants proved quite a nuisance. I ran into an I ran into another traveller as I made my way down here. I tried to call out to her as she dashed past, but she barely even glanced in my direction. Not an appreciator of maps like you or I, obviously. I ran into- oh, that's the same thing. We'll have to come back here when we get wall jump, because I can definitely hear a sad caterpillar. Also, dude, go visit your wife. The one consistent thread in Paul Cornifer's life is that his wife loves him and wishes he was at home more. There's a kind of oddly believable tragedy to the two of them. The obsessive husband who never has any time for his wife and buys a very small house despite the fact that the two of them are... despite the fact that she's too tall for it. Oh, my first death. So now we get to find out what happens when you die in this game, which is that, um... Well, it's got a similar concept to that of Dark Souls, because it's not just uh, thematic parallels, there are mechanical parallels as well. And one of them is that uh, when you die, you can recover your lost... Uh, lost stuff. If you can make your way back to your corpse. But, unlike Dark Souls, you have to battle your corpse for it. Which is an extremely cool detail, if you ask me. Which no one did specifically. But if you're here watching my channel, then implicitly you... I think we can all assume that you did. I'm extremely bad at fighting these things. It's normally less of a problem, but I think part of the issue here is that it's a very busy environment visually. Which is normally great, it's very lush and lovely. But, um... But some, some, something going on in, like, the visual parts of my brain right now that makes it hard for me to keep track of things. You can hear the spooky ghost music. Which is created by proximity to a spooky ghost. Ghost slain, money recovered. Petty mercantilism can remain enabled. Phallic statues that squirt white goo, thoroughly maimed. I 
I think there's a guy over here. Yeah, there's definitely a guy over here. Let's put up babies. Tiny squib, you approach fearless. Are you a hunter like me? Do you feel the urge inside to stalk, to kill, to understand? Then take it, my journal. It will aid you. At first, the text may seem difficult to discern, but a learned hunter will come to understand its words. Venture to the depths of this land and slay its beasts. Prove yourself worthy to bear the mark of hunter. Did you spit that? Gross. So I think this thing gives us basically bonus upgrades or bonus cash or something based on uh, the number of creatures of... yeah. Well, perhaps we... I don't think... oh yeah, no, we just unlock bonus information about them when we kill them. Venge flies, gruzzers, gruz mothers, etc. So now we have an explicit incentive to slaughter everything. Juro, Noctuba. Little squib, you may have overcome a few creatures, but you are only just beginning. Don't delay. Descend into the belly of this world and hunt down the life you find. Juro. Oh, he wants churros. That's understandable. I could definitely go for a churro. Now, see, that time I jumped into the spikes, I did so with a plan, which is unusual. The plan sadly didn't really do anything, but there was a plan, and that's what matters. She's cool. She's so much cooler than me. I keep forgetting I can just wizard my health back. Those who stray from the White King's roads can fa shall face the law of Un. The music is gorgeous too, throughout, and it tends to really perfectly evoke the zone it's in. The echoing sadness of Hallow Nest. Well, no, not Hallow Nest. I'm going to keep calling it that, but I mean the crossroads. The dusty echoing of the crossroads. The twinkling, Ghibli-esque brightness of nature in this place. Oh, time for a mini-boss. I'm not sure this is a mini boss, I think it's just an enemy type. The creatures that seem to be controlled or whatever by the, I assume, parasite seem to have a some of them seem to be people, which sort of shamble around in vague parodies of their former actions. 
but I'm not sure the animal ones are meaningfully different to when they were alive. Hopefully we'll find a fast travel thing soon. So I can go back up to the surface and spend all my money. Oh, is she waiting for me this time? are some breakable walls, which is why I'm obsessively hitting walls all the time. In case anyone was wondering. I do need to figure out how to deal with these horrible mosquito things. Why, you could simply leave and not have to fight the horrible mosquito things. Ah! But now you are impugning my warrior courage. And we can't have that. Ah, okay. signs of habitation. I wonder if this means there's a uh, a train station nearby. Which is not what they're called, but it is kind of what they are. This zone has a lot of these big, tall, connecty chambers, which are useful for getting around to some extent. A toll machine. Wow. I can't believe this uh, society was so so stingy with its public services. Not even benches freely available. I'm not actually sure where to head next. There's a few different paths through this area. I'm inclined to go up in the hope that I'll find some way to a new, uh, new fast travel station. But yeah, the thematic parallels between this and Dark Souls are very strong and very intentional. Also, hmm, interesting. That's just occurred to me. There's a very strong artistic parallel between this and the kind of like Miyazaki of what people call the kind of Studio Ghibli look. But, or oh, well, not in terms of not in direct terms of the look, but definitely in terms of content of the art and the kinds of ideas presented via the art, but 
Uh, art butt is what you get when you sit in a chair drawing all day. But um, there's a there's a parallel there between both of those subjects and Dark Souls again, which is well, there's a, several different ones, but the one that occurs to me right now is the uh, yeah. I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> um, the greater mind once dreamed of leaf and cast these caverns so. In every bush and every vine, the mind of Un reveals itself to us. That was that was a bit jarring. I was expecting the I was expecting the the second phrase to match the meter of the first. Um, but this this sense of vanished grandeur, this sense of the decay of a once grand and beautiful thing, the rotting corpse of something once beautiful, still still cloaked in dignity even as it senesces. That's what pretty much the core theme of <laughs> all of um, from Software's modern work, and it's a very common theme in um, Miyazaki's work. Uh, both the Miyazakis. When I say Miyazaki here, I'm not talking about um, Hid Hidetaka Miyazaki or From Software. I'm talking about Hayao Miyazaki of Studio Ghibli. Anyway, what do you know? Two two Miyazakis, both alike in dignity. Anyway, this guy's going to be a tough fight. A fairly tough fight. Obviously, everything's easier when you Kamehameha it. I think these are heads on spikes in the background. Um, I think they're the heads of a certain kind of creature that we'll run into later on. One of the other societies here, because we have the Masked Bug People Society in this world. We also have a sort of a tribal bug people as well, who seem to have been displaced, let's say by the former bug people's grand civilization. Colonialism, not just for humanity. Here a guy. down here and stand still so I can pop you like a big bag full of money. What do you think you're doing? You dare to become between me and my prey? Is it a habit of yours to scurry about, getting in the way and causing bother? Know this, Kerr, I am Zote the Mighty, a knight of great renown. Cross me again and you'll find out why they call my weapon Life Ender. Bruh. Seriously? You being like this? What are you still bothering me for? I'm a knight. I'm not interested in your childish games. I need my rest. Be gone, lest I draw my nail. Hi Trokantaze, nice to see you. 
So, I mean, <laughs> I guess in addition to all of the general thematic parallels between uh, between this and uh, FromSoft games, it's also got a uh, a Siegmeier. You know, every FromSoft game has its Siegmeier of Katarina. It's nice to see that uh, this this thing that's distinctly inspired by modern FromSoft games also does so. This is a Solaire and a Siegmeier, now that I think about it. The green children walked from the dream unto these lands. Here now we shall wait, patient for the call to return. There's a lot of very sort of loaded, thematically weighty nouns going on. We've got, we've got the White King, we've got the green children. The Hollow Knight. Which... I assumed was the name of the, or referred to the protagonist, but uh, based on my recollections from the last time I tried to stream this and I got a little bit further in the game, that's not the case and the Hollow Knight is some kind of a mythic figure. You go, oh fuck. Oh come on, I can't fight two of you at once. I literally cannot. Oh god, I got so much money I have to go kill my ghost. I need it. I require it to pay for goods and services. Whenever you rest or die, <clears throat> or get far enough away, everything respawns. Oops. Oh, I have to go all the long way round. Okay. I've got to remember to try and cut that brick down so I don't have to go the long way next time. Having defeated that guy, you at least don't get locked in the room with him again. So I guess he's not really a mini-boss. It locks you in a room with him like he's a mini-boss, but he does respawn every time. At least I don't have to fight me close to that knight. the way the game is played. By blasting guys with the focus totality of your psychic might in the back of the head when they're not looking. Man, that guy's worth so much money. If I go... If I go kill some ordinary things, I'll have enough soul. On the other hand, I might just lose all my hit points doing so. Wowzers. I knew there was one eventually. Oh, this one's 140. The last one was 50, I think. And thus the great chain of... Well, I was going to say capitalism, but I suppose the worst you could accuse them of is mercantilism. 
great and ancient kingdom. Well, actually, I suppose they're tolls levied by a uh, rightfully appointed monarch, right? So really, it's all just monarchism all the way down. Whoever did the art for this game very had very similar strong feelings to mine about beautiful cast iron fretwork, I have to say that. I used to think the kingdom below was all dead cold rock, but I've been told different. Travellers speak of startling variety in Hallownest's caverns. Even just besides those crossroads, there's meant to be an area filled with leafy greenery. I told those same travellers about the wonderful grasses that grow around the town. They didn't seem impressed. I love this guy's little moustache. Pretty much everything here is worth getting eventually, because it's going to be useful eventually. But, um... I think I'll grab this one first. This is a trinket you can wear that will uh, let you retain some stuff that you lose. Rancid egg. I found this under the counter. Some creature must have laid it here while I was stuck down in the ruins. I suppose you could buy it. I won't miss its sour odour. I, I have no idea what the egg does. I'm going to assume that having it in my inventory will come in handy at some point. Oh, he's got the lantern for 1800. I'll have to remember to come back for that. There's definitely, there's at least one dark zone that we've seen so far. Oh, hey, it's the guy. <laughs> you there, why are you skulking about in the shadows? Yes, your eyes do not deceive you. I am Zote the Mighty, a knight of great renown. Tremble before me. While you were hiding here in your dingy little village, I ventured into the dark pit below us and slew a great beast. It had sharp mandibles and atrocious manners. Yes, yes, all glory to me, but I don't have time for your adulation. I must rest and prepare for my next journey down. That daft old fellow over there, he keeps talking absolute drivel. He seems to think the very air is deadly down in the caverns. Perhaps he should consider not breathing. He keeps talking about dreams, too. Pfah. Dreams are for those to feel... Oh, I misread that. Dreams are for those too feeble to truly live. Hmm, what a squalid little hamlet this is. The air is foul and the townsfolk have beady eyes. I'll be heading back down below as soon as possible. Supposedly Hallow Nest was like the one great beacon of civilization throughout its like, throughout the like golden age. And that Dirtmouth is all that's left. But presumably there must be other places up here on the surface. I wonder if we're all just a particular kind of bug. I thought that um, we're wearing masks that mark us out in some way as being some particular class, maybe knights. <clears throat> but now I find myself wondering that maybe this is just one of the kinds of bugs. There are other bugs that are wearing masks, though. like a boss encounter. Come no closer, ghost. 
I've seen you creeping through the undergrowth, stalking me. This old kingdom, a terrible thing awakens. I can smell it in the air. I know what you are. I know what you tried to do. I can't allow it. Well, that's me taught a lesson, I guess. What's making those footprints? Footsteps. doing very well at this today. I'm gonna go fight the Hornet again. It's easy <laughs> it's easier than fighting this guy. I think that the more times you die, the tougher your ghost gets to fight, or it might be based on you getting stronger over the course of the game.
Well, goodbye. Mothwing Cloak, which gives me the air dash. Ow. Would it seek to break the seals? They cannot be undone. They must be undone. Let us sleep, little shadow. Return to your darkness. Allow us our peace. So this guy... I guess we're... I guess we, the short people of the masks, are the people compelled to return to the depths of Hallow Nest to break whatever the seals are. Hornet must be some other kind of a thing, since she doesn't uh, want us to do that. There's also a nice little detail that uh, knights of the type that we ostensibly are our weapons, our swords, are called nails. Which again is tying itself into the into the sort of bug people idea. You know, an, an old rusty iron nail would be a little sword to a little beetle knight, right? But it's a nice it's a nice detail that she has a Is that guy gonna fight me if I get close to him? That she has a, a needle and thread. Are we cool? Ow, fuck. Can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> See, this guy's also wearing a mask, but he wears it on top of his head. Oh, hello there. It seems we both tread far from the path. I can hardly believe those dusty old highways led to such a lush and lively place. This building suggests some form of worship, although its idol has clearly been long forgotten. Doubles equally well for a moment's respite. I saw a strange fellow out there. He seemed quite taken by the lake. I planned to offer greetings, though I figured I'd first tend to my nail on the chance that our meeting goes poorly. Your nail looks a fine instrument, but it's showing signs of wear. I'd wager up there it would take you far. Down here, however, I suspect you'll soon meet dangers the surface can't match. Hmm. Hallow Nest is perfect for vigilant explorers like us. So tense and thrilling. In this place, you're either alert or you're dead. Hmm. Oh, we have three notches, I guess. So I can either get more soul or I can get more geo. I think I'll go for the geo. Can't take his nail, I notice. Also, no mask. I don't think any of the enemies are wearing masks. Un was definitely a divine figure mentioned at some point in some of the other at some point. <laughs> Someone definitely said the name Un to us at some point. I think it was some of the totems around this area. My guess is that this was once the place of the farms that fed the great city. 
is a fairly obvious inference to make. Ow, dick. I'm leaving. If you're gonna be like this, I don't see any reason in attempting to talk to you. There's definitely a way to get to the other side of something. I'm gonna need to fight this guy, aren't I? to like using that as a finishing finishing move. <laughs> I will duel you until I have ha had exactly as much irritation as I will take from you, and then I will zap you with my magic soul. Wipe that one out as well. I'm gonna get make so much money and then head back up to the surface. We all know the wizard's maxim. If you can blast a warrior, why wouldn't you? was where that went. I just want to read this again. The greater mind once dreamed of leaf and cast these caverns so. In every bush and every vine the mind of Un reveals itself to us. So it's saying that the format, the, not format, the layout, the shape of this place was shaped by their god, therefore the mind of their god, the intent and meanings and knowings of their god can be divined from the way this place grows, which is a neat detail. There's a way across the Lake of Un later on. Later Un.
wonder if there's some kind of spider analogue in this bug-based fantasy world. Maybe that's what the beast beast hunter was. It did have several eyes. But then insects have several eyes. Wait. No, do they? No, insects just have compound eyes. Ooh, a treasure chest. You don't see them very often. go before that thing kills me. Oh shit, there's tons of them. These ones all look dead. A balder shell. Protect its bearer with a hard shell while focusing soul. Interesting. So that sounds like it's gonna uh, protect me. So it's whenever it's whenever the uh, the healing ability is being charged, then oh, that's me dead again. That's probably pretty useful, actually. Oh, hey, you're still here. Hmm. Thought he would have moved on. Anyway, he's very much the Solera of Astora of this piece. Good old Quirrell. Oh hey, I don't have to walk slowly anymore. I keep forgetting I can zoom now. Because, you know, when you take an ancient magical cloak off of one of your fallen comrades, the immediate, uh, the correct immediate response is to figure out how you can use it to get around faster. And then just abuse the absolute bejesus out of it. Whenever I see a room like this that's mostly black empty space, I think there must be a secret area, but there never is. And then every hundredth time there is one. I'll kick anyone's ass. I'll kick a ghost's ass, I'll kick a bug's ass, I'll kick my own bug ghost's ass.
definitely hear a sad caterpillar upstairs. I guess this is where they used to nest. The Baldur's, not the sad caterpillar. Maybe I can find the caterpillar if I can wall jump up there, which means I'll have to come back later to do the wall jumping, since we don't have that yet. Not my most skillful moment, I'll give him I'll uh I'll admit that. I guess I am succeeding at talking less this time, which was ultimately the goal. I do wonder, unfortunately, how... Uh, how interesting people could possibly find streams that don't have constant chattering over the top of them. Imagine being a ghost and watching your body come back to reclaim its soul and then it kills you or re-kills you, double extra re-deads you and then immediately throws itself onto the spikes like a, you know, like a bug who's not very good at a video game. Hmm. Well I'm glad that, it, that at least you find it pleasing. Right, so I've got to remember to come back here to get that stuff after I've uh, successfully got the multi-jump. Let's see, there's something to the right there, and there's a, so there's a central zone, then there's a zone down and to the right, and then there's a weird burrow-looking thing. I wonder if ants exist in this world. Imagine a day in the life of that one guy I keep hitting on the head when I leave. Thump and gone. Yes, this is another little window into into society. Yet another parallel with Dark Souls is that you find yourself wondering as you play through and wander around, you find yourself wondering what this place was like back when it was a golden age, back when it was full of art and culture and colonialism. I wonder if 
these things respawn. I've been assuming that the the geo you get from from creatures is renewable, but the geo you get from these mound thingies is not. Perhaps I'm wrong about that. And I'm glad you're enjoying it too. It is very uh very good music. Ah, so the yes, okay. Confirmation then, the Geo Ore does not respawn, which I think is awful. I guess it doesn't respawn. That's also terrible, I'm sorry. Well, you know, I was or less right. there was a hole in the wall there. Oh hey Blob, nice to see you. <laughs> You've been a follower of my work long enough that you really should not be surprised. That's right, it's me, the Spike Forgetter-in-Chief. <clears throat> Sorry I missed you. If you're feeling lost, why not pop up to our store in Dirtmouth and purchase a map of this area? Available now for an excellent price. Oh, I should have done that when we were up there before. Wait, didn't I already buy a map? I love the worms so much. Actually, we should probably go and see the Worm Grandfather sooner or later so that we can get our special rewards. He'll give us pocket money for saving all of the other worms. I wonder if this guy has anything more to say. He's only got six eyes, right? So it's presumably not a spider. Churu, nope. He's just saying the same thing. Go kill shit for me. Even though this place is so richly alive as compared to the crossroads, it's still inimical to life. It's full of possessed or infected animals. And it's full of what I suppose is acid, although might be poison. Which is curious as well. Every element of this world is suffused with death, whether it's the dry, dusty bones of the crossroads, or the very alive death of poison and predator, I suppose.
Hmm, this seems dangerous. Jeez, it is dangerous. This may prove a little too difficult for me right now. <laughs> I think I might need to come back here after I have. More abilities? Maybe there's some kind of spike protective ability, or maybe I just need to get good. Which is also very on trend for something inspired by Dark Souls. Oh, I say inspired. Influenced is the correct term. Because this game is incredibly strongly its own thing. And I can understand why it's developed such a huge fandom. I say, well, let's not say huge, let's say dedicated. Yeah. I certainly would be in that fandom if I'd ever been able to pl play more than the first five to six hours of the game over and over. But I think it's telling in a very positive way. But despite the fact that I've played it, played the first few hours of the game so many times, I've never stopped being intrigued and never lost the desire to see the rest of it. Okay, so it looks like the only thing here was the spike zone, which probably occupies that whole central square, which means that there's only one place left to go. As far as I can tell. See, I can't tell if these guys are wearing masks or if those are just their faces. Maybe they're all just faces. Maybe we're all just wearing masks. Another dime store philosophical concepts. notches. I wonder what unlocks new notches. New masks I think expand your hit points and new soul reservoirs increase the amount of soul you have. Maybe there's items that increase it? Yeah, down here is definitely the only place left to go. at this from the other side. Blech. I fall for these things every damn time. That's going to lead back down to where we need to explore anyway, so I should do that first.
Oh wait, this is the station? Why isn't that marked on my- Oh, it is marked on my map, it's hidden behind the markers for itself. Well, if I'm here, I may as well go back up to the surface, actually. Spend all my money, as is traditional for adventurers. I like to imagine the the minute a group of wandering adventurers rolls into t into the town, squatting at the top of the the local dungeon, everybody immediately triples all their prices. A joke I have stolen from a webcomic. There is there is something to the idea of the. Oh hey, who's this? This is another kind of a guy. He's got a shadowy hood. What's his deal? Sarema. Pale thing, you wear that nail with ease. If you're in search of combat, you'll find no great warriors in this decaying burrow. I've heard an arena exists somewhere below, one built for our like. Meet me there and we'll test what skills you possess. I'll be heading down soon, come and find me if you dare. He's very full of himself. Hello, Nest. What challenges await in its ruin? It's also a nice detail that all of the armour and shields and things that people are wearing are very clearly bug carapaces. I love the idea that this is a society with, like, kind of a million different casts and maybe a million different kinds of, uh, like, ta uh, domesticated animals as well. Bug people wearing bug shells as armor and holding bug shell tools. Caseto bueno. No, mio. Papanada. These look like they mark. Okay, so these mark treasure. These mark interesting spots. I think that just means you can, that's a marker you can put wherever you want, but I'm not sure. Maybe it marks something. I'm not sure what. I'm just going to buy all of these. I thought that letter from Cornifer said that there was a map <sighs> I could buy. Bapanada. Yeah, with the amount of money I'm paying, you'd think Cornifer could afford to buy her a bigger house. Stooped over her desk. He doesn't deserve her. She's too good for him. I don't want to get any of this. I should be saving up for the lantern that will let me access another zone. Those guys are just such a pain to deal with, you know? Huh. Oh. Everything's a trick. Everything's a trap. Trust no one. Trust nothing. I feel like I must be missing a lot of secret rooms, but... I don't know, I've been whacking a lot of walls. Can I? No, okay. What did we learn? Well, we learned that... Spikes that are brightly coloured are ones that you can touch, but you shouldn't touch them. It's kind of an interesting failing of the iconography. 
Games love to illustrate things for you uh, indirectly, which is normally fine. But I think the colour between uh, spikes you can touch and spikes you can't is maybe a little bit too similar. From moss and leaf our life is drawn, while it grows upon the path we shall never wilt. I wonder if that's referring to the spikes, the thorns, or perhaps it's a more general more general claim about this society's golden age. While it grows upon the path we never wilt. Or perhaps it's a remnant from the people who came after. The ones who followed after those who came before. There's nowhere else for me to go, so this must be the next area. I think I've literally explored... Oh, hold on. <clears throat> I've already beaten the boss of this zone and got the air dash. So maybe there's literally nothing else I can do here until I... Uh, until I get some other skill from somewhere else. I should have thought of that. So I guess it's time to head back into the center zone, the hub area, and find another way to progress. Okay. I've been kind of assuming that the various different steles that we find, and also these weird phallic statues, are all remnants of the same civilization, but maybe that's not the case. There's got to be a way for me to reach that, right? Hello, nice to see you. I say, throwing myself into the acid over and over and over again like a fool. How do I reach that? There's got to be a way. There's probably not an ability that lets me go in the water. I would be really surprised. Maybe there's an extended dash later. Yes, a lot of people are very fond of my voice. It's sadly my major selling- I say sadly, it's my major selling point as a streamer and Let's Player. Oh, for heaven's sake. <clears throat> but yes, uh, the, the single most common compliment I get on my channel is that people find my voice very comforting and soothing. Well, what I would like my main selling point to be is the fact that I talk about themes and analyse design and assess games as works of multidisciplinary art. But voice nice also good. And also that's more of a thing I do on my YouTube channel than uh, something I do here on the Twitch. Although it's certainly not completely absent. However, my lovely voice was damaged recently, which is why I've started doing chill streams where I don't talk nearly as much as I used to. Oh, I see. Interesting. That's the first time that's what I've been complimented on. Uh, with regards to my voice. Normally it really is just people saying that they like the sound of it. Find it comforting and calming. Oh, I misread what you said. That's a worm I rescued earlier. And this is the spike hole, which I visited earlier also. <laughs> I 
Well, the third reason people come to my uh, YouTube channel is the anarchic humor and sex jokes. There just haven't been very many of those today because I have a headache. Oh wait, hang on, that was the... That was the fast travel. I can just leave. I simply do not need to be here any longer. And also, uh, thank you for the follow. I didn't- oh, hey, it's this guy. Didn't realise you'd followed because my, uh, stream manager is imperfect, to say the best. That's not the phrase people say. I meant to say, to say the least. Eh, pale thing. You use these old lines? Pathetic. A real warrior carries himself to combat. He has no need for such convenience. Leave me be. It's the arena I seek. I've already wasted far too long in these cursed roads. This guy's such a dick. I guess... Oh, yes. So, in keeping with the direct parallels to Dark Souls, that would make this guy the... Uh... Lautrec. Uh, yes, my YouTube channel is Self-Critical Automaton, and there is a link to it in my about uh, here on Twitch. I think there might be a couple of links, actually. Lautrec is in Dark Souls 1. Lautrec is the uh, sinister knight in the golden armor. He's the um, he's the one who kills the uh, what's her name? Uh, the firekeeper at Firelink Shrine. If you let him out of his cage, and he's feeling just fine. Where the hell am I going? Yeah, I usually do that as well when I'm playing Dark Souls 1. There we go. This is the only place I haven't been, I think. Or at least that is now accessible with the dash. Or dash sex. Dash sex? No, that's not a thing. Oh, you surprised me. Hello, hello. Come in, sweetling, and make yourself at home. I'm Salubra, and this is my cosy little charm store. Do the townsfolk out there tell you to come and visit me? Mm, yes, this is a lovely little village, isn't it? Warm and intimate and full of life. What were we talking about? Oh yes, charms. I can see you've started your own collection. Very nice. I'll show you some of my own, and you can take one home with you if you like. <laughs> Wait, why do I only have 28? Oh my god, I died. I died and I forgot to go fight my ghost. Oh, you don't need to apologise. Um, I, I like interaction with viewers, and also, it boosts my numbers. Aha! Charm notches, so this is where I get additional notches. <laughs> this is exactly what I'm like in real life. Big and jiggly and unable to stop giggling. This is where we found the shop guy. I wonder what she's supposed to be. Some of the some of the bugs have very clear direct parallels to real bugs. But um I'm not so sure about that one. Where's the train station? I need to <laughs> I need to go catch the train to go fight my ghost. And other fun phrases that you only really get to say when you're playing videos games.
No, videos games was intentional. It's a running joke. Well, if you don't believe me, you're welcome to watch every single piece of archived material of my streams that is on my YouTube channel, and indeed, also my various YouTube Let's Plays, and you will see that I am in fact not lying. Oh, sure. I'm not offended or anything, don't worry. <laughs> Like, for reals, nothing to worry about. Oh, I missed this one. I do find it a little bit irritating that the little, um... Uh... The little bush creatures make squibbly noises that are very similar to the... Uh... The worms that I need to rescue. I think the only difference is that the worms make several noises in a- Oh, motherfucker! <laughs> Come on, ghost, I can hear you. I know you're around here somewhere. Get wrecked. One day I will achieve my life's dream of crushing a zooming mosquito under a giant rock. <sighs> Until then, there's sword attacks. It looks like the fairies from the charm I'm wearing refuse to rescue coins that fall in the sink. What's the point in having them if they won't put their hands in acid for me? God, that's a good sound effect. Just a really satisfying, round, gablumpsh. Which is all you really want from something heavy falling in water. I don't know what Geo's supposed to be. I might have some ideas later in the game after I've seen more of this, uh, more of this world. More of the lost golden age of Hallow Nest. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's made up for the game. I don't think it's a reference to... I don't think it's a ref reference to real-world beetle economics. Hell.
I've read this a few times. Wait, I had... No, I did read this once. The Pilgrim's Way, travellers of Hallownest, descend through verdant wilds and fungal groves to the city at this kingdom's heart. Which is a different game. There all wishes shall be granted, all truths revealed. Extremely good writing in this game as well. I've been saying this about literally everything, I think. Every single thing that we've run into. I find myself saying, oh, the writing's so lovely, the art is so lovely, the music is so lovely. <clears throat> the way it ties its themes into its visuals and its writing. And the events of its plot, as far as I know, at any rate. Hi, Grandpa. I rescued you, dumb kids. Pocket money, please. Ooh, a mask piece. Okay. So he doesn't just give Geo. Okay, that's there. In the bottom room of the next area, I either need the dash or the wall jump to get through. Owie zowie. Yeah, I think this was the wall jump I need. Trust no one, not even the ceiling. Although it seems like ceiling is fairly important to the events of the uh, backstory here. Ah yeah, wall jump. Okay. Which means the next place is to try the low area. <clears throat> and of course, if you are distracted reading your map, you may be attacked by a fly. This is yet another... Uh, Another parallel between this game and Dark Souls. It's quite hard to get hit when resting at the bonfire. Oh, I did come this way previously. Because if you rest, it resets all of the locations. So you have to be in a position where you can aggro something. I mean, it's theoretically possible, yeah, but like... Oh yeah, this is definitely the other way we can go. I think this might be access to the... Oh, this is the street signs towards the city again, which we saw previously. So I, I suspect that that does mean this way to the city. Uh-huh. And this leads to the mushroom zone. It's a good thing we're so small, because there's not much room in there. Oh, that's true, actually. Yes, sometimes the, the crossbowman can um, can get line of sight into the room if you have the door open and stuff. That's another one of these walls, one of these locations that needs the ground pound, which we don't have. I think I came back to the fumble... Fucking hell. I think I came back to the... <laughs> Get ballooned, idiot. Oh. 
These things are like inconsiderate people on the bus. Oh wait, I need to buy the map before I can see anything here. Which means I need to find Cornifer again. Guys. You alright, buddy? You good? <laughs> so we can see all of the- this guy's like a praying mantis, and we can see all of his body. He doesn't have, like, a carapace. Don't try to sneak past me, I can smell you. Hmm, do you collect a lot of geo? Give me a geo and you can see something nice. Sure, I'll pay to see something nice. Should I be should I be running about this? Let me show you then. Take a look. Do you want them? If you really, really want them, I'll trade them for more geo. Ah, oh, okay, fragile heart. That lets you survive, survive a killing blow, I think. This one boosts the amount of geo you find. This one, I suppose, boosts your damage, but it looks like if you die, you maybe lose these because they're fragile, so that's what I'm going to assume. Well, I'm not buying any of these right now because I don't trust myself not to die immediately and waste them. Leg eater, leg eater, eat me a leg. I'm hungry for dinner and I don't have an egg. My partner's giving me a really weird look across the room now. Oh, I definitely can't fit through there. Maybe there is something that lets me survive going in the water. It's also nice that the water seems almost more virulent down here. Maybe it's not something bad coming up from the depths. Maybe it's maybe it's the drippings and foul flowings from high up above. Getting low down enough that they're causing... That they're condensing, perhaps. And uh, concentrating, that's the word I'm looking for. Are there mushroom people as well as bug people? Are we good? You're, you're cool, right? Oh, hell yeah. I do that when I'm having a bad day. Actually, I do both of these things when I'm having a bad day. Mm, I may die here. Ah, no, I'll be fine. Kamehameha wins again. Well, I mean, if you put it like that, not so much. I do have a nasty... Uh, nasty problem with my chest ever since COVID, though. I cough up a lot of slime. Especially if I stream too much. Cornifer, you bastard. Where are you? I need a map. Oh, the geo mounds are little. Um, can I hit wowzers? Okay, don't do that. <laughs> hmm. 
Yeesh. It's almost like it was an enormous explosion that nearly nearly slaughtered me. It looks like corner for paper. He must be around here. Oh, is that a mask piece? Oh, hey, Coral. Isn't this something? I'd not expected to, to discover so huge a stag station after that foggy descent. The bugs of Hallownest must have been an impressive lot, building such grand structures so far into these wilds. It seems the dangerous creatures about haven't yet made their way in here. It's the perfect place for a quick rest. Nah, Minobis. Can you imagine this place in its time? Hordes of bugs travelling about the kingdom, stag bells ringing, the station bustling with activity and life. Now only our like even know it exists. That's a special thing, I suppose, to cherish these sites even in their decay. Boom! There it is! That is exactly the thematic underpinning of, like... It's like one of the ma three major underlying themes of, of the Souls games. Hmm. Is it that... Just faintly, you can still hear the echo of the bells. No, that's that's the literal, actual one of these guys that I've woken up to come do stuff. Hmm. You've opened several stagnations now, haven't you? Stag stations now, haven't you? I'm thankful for the opportunity to once more travel through the kingdom. As I visit more places, I feel my memory is returning to me, like the stagways of my mind are running once more. Continue to open the stations and you'll have my deepest gratitude. I wonder if... Maybe the stations were closed off successively as an attempt to control whatever horrible curse or contagion leaked its way up out of the deep ground. Which is presumably also the thing that is controlling all of the all of the zombie bugs all around. But presumably not the same thing that's compelling the the masked bugs to attempt to reach the bottom of Hallow Nest. Which is a more is much closer parallel to the sort of cordyceps idea. Although Cordyceps isn't the only parasite that compels its host to behave in certain ways after invading their brain. There's a similar parasite that affects certain snails, which compels them to climb to high places and wave around so that birds will eat them. Anyway, that's that's my that's my idea for a sort of a parallel between the behaviour of the masked bugs. Pat the mask, Jill. Oh, hang on! I should go and see the uh, the big the big squibbly bug and buy some more notches. Oh, he's selling masks on the wall behind him. So these must be masks that they're wearing, unless he's selling people's heads, which I suppose is also a possibility. There's one way to get ahead of the competition. Ah, <sighs> Bapanada. Dear 
Çor. I know. Sometimes timings just work out beautifully. She's a kind of a slug or something. Let's see. What do these do I actually want? Attack range. Uh, bonus hit point. Uh, you don't move when you swing your nail. Boost spells. Makes focus faster. Focusing faster could be very useful, but I want the notches. What? Oh, okay. Not until I have five charms. Well, this is the cheapest other one, so... Weird-ass charm maniac. Well, I guess now I have an incentive to try and get every single charm I can. I guess she is pretty charming. The nail range booster is probably one I should prioritize getting. She seems to think... She seems to think that this, uh, this village... Whoopsie daisy. Oh man, I fell right in this thing's spike. She seems to think this village is still uh, teeming with life and that it's not been completely abandoned, which is weird. Let's see, that goes to the fungal waste. I wonder if any of the other zones zones are accessible just yet. I'm going to check if they are, I think. And then that will probably be it for today after that. Ow. I talked about this a lot last time, but I really, I really love the design for the outskirts. The music, the art, the content of the art, the, the, foss the fossilized everything's everywhere, the nautilid patterns. It's all got a very strong, very strong tone of sort of dusty emptiness. Abandonment, rotting, and molder. Not rotting. It's long past rotting. Oh wait, hang on. This is no good. We need the ground pound to get through here. But the dust of an old attic. Something abandoned for a long time. Oh, hello again. Are you still running about? Why not join me down here? There's plenty of wealth in these rocks for anyone willing to put a, put a bit of work in. 
Those crystals out there are worth a fair bit, but I have a feeling there's something even more valuable hidden just a bit deeper in. I can almost smell it. You're welcome to join me. There's enough for both of us. Or if you don't feel like digging, you can just sit and sing with me. I wonder if it's possible to dig. Let's see, okay. So that's darkness, this is ground pound. Wall jumping is the next one along. Yeah, so the fungal wastes really is the only place we have left to go. This seems like a good hub to explore from. So that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me again sometime soon. I don't have a schedule currently because of reasons, but uh, I uh, announce streams a few hours ahead of time on Twitter and on my Discord, to which there is a link in the, in my, uh, whatever you call it, my about page? Yeah, that's what it's called. So yeah, that's going to be it from me for today. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe and share. I also stream on Twitch and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.